Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to set your exposure when shooting in S-Log3. If you want to learn how to get less noise in your S-Log footage, then this video is definitely for you. Let's go. In this video I'm going to start off with a quick overview of S-Log3 and what makes S-Log3 noisy sometimes. I'll then take you through some different ways of setting your exposure when shooting in a controlled environment indoors, outdoors in bright light or outdoors in low light or night time. Oh and I'll also include a super useful bonus tip at the end. S-Log3 is a gamma curve which records data from the camera's sensor to try and capture the widest possible range of lights to darks in the image. Sony themselves describes S-Log3 as having characteristics that represents scanned film. It does however require some additional post-production editing or colour grading to translate it to more normal looking footage that can be displayed on a TV or monitor. Colour grading S-Log3 footage is a big topic so I won't be going into too much detail in this video but if you want to see a future video on colour grading S-Log3 make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. If you are shooting in S-Log3 on the Sony a7S 3 then you'll probably want to shoot in 10-bit 422 colour just so you can maintain as much quality during colour grading. Because when you're shooting in S-Log3 you're always going to have to do some colour correction or colour grading work in post, you can set your exposure in camera during shooting to take full advantage of the benefits of S-Log. And that's what the rest of this video is about. So what creates noisy looking S-Log3 footage? Well S-Log3 doesn't necessarily have any more or less noise than other gammas or picture profiles. When shooting S-Log3 you want to make sure your exposure is as high as possible above the noise floor of the camera. The noise floor is basically where the camera sensor starts to introduce the most noise into the image. If your exposure is set too low and it's in the noise floor area then you'll see more noise when you colour grade. Especially if you're going to try and raise the shadow areas during colour grading. If you're using the official Sony LUT to convert S-Log3 to Rec. 709, then the LUT expects a certain exposure to work optimally. I'll put a link in the description below to the official Sony LUT, just so you don't have to search for it yourself. The official Sony LUT expects zebras to show on an 18% middle grey card when the zebras are set to 41% in camera. The problem with this is sometimes if you set this exposure up, 41% zebras on a middle grey card, then you're going to get some noise in your footage. This is most likely when you have a dimly lit scene or a scene with a lot of contrast, especially where you'll have shadow areas that fall in the noise floor area. The solution to this is to actually overexpose where middle grey is by setting your zebras to something like 55%. Basically you want to aim for about one to two stops of overexposure in your S-Log3 footage. For every 8% you add to your zebra value, you're adding about one stop of exposure. So one stop above 41% zebras will be 49% zebras, and two stops above middle grey will be 41% plus 8% plus another 8%, which will be 57% zebras showing on an 18% middle grey card. As a general rule, if you want to overexpose S-Log3 3 to reduce noise, then set your zebras to 55% so that they show on a middle grey card. Also, to minimise the possible noise, you should shoot at one of the two base ISOs on the Sony A7S 3 So that's 640 ISO or 12800 ISO. One compromise to be aware of, however, is that if you overexpose middle grey, you might actually reduce the total dynamic range available to you. I'll show you an example of this later in the video. So here we are in Premiere Pro, let me just make this a bit bigger. And you can see I've got some test shots shot in the studio here. So this first shot was set at 41% middle grey. And you can see up here I've zoomed in 400%. If I just play this back full screen, you can see a little bit of noise here. This next section was actually shot at 55% zebras on the middle grey card. I'll just play this back full screen without zooming in. And you can see the blacks in the background and the shadows are pretty noise free. If we zoom into this, the same 400%, you can see that we don't have much noise in the shadows here. Once again, this is at 55%. Here's another example at 55%. And notice that the blacks in the background here and the shadow areas are pretty noise free. 
So basically what I've done here is I've used this middle gray section on this color checker passport video. I've set the zebras in the camera to 55% and I've adjusted the exposure by brightening or lowering the key light until the zebras appear on this middle gray section here. So in this case, we're overexposing middle gray because this should be set to 41% zebras. If we have a look at some side by sides and I'll just go full screen here. I'm just going to play this back in a second, but pay attention to the difference in the blacks and the shadows on the left compared to the right. On the left we've got the 55% zebra overexposure, and on the right we've got the technically correct 41% zebras for middle grey. Okay, let's play this back. And I hope you can see this with the YouTube compression, that you've got a lot more noise on the right hand side. Here's another example. In this case, I've boosted the shadows by plus 100 using Lumetri. And hopefully you can see some differences here. Pay attention to the side of my cheek here and also the noise in the color checker. Let's just play this. And hopefully there you can see some differences in the noise, especially on my cheek area. The next clip here, what I've done is boosted the shadows by 100 and also the exposure by plus one. So you might find yourself doing this if you want to brighten up the shadow areas or the exposure in S-Log3 footage. But notice what happens with the 41% Zebra version. We're getting a lot more noise now. And in the 55% Zebra version, we're actually getting a little bit of noise, but it's nowhere near as bad as the 41% version. Let's just play this back. And finally, in this side-by-side -side comparison, I've boosted the shadows by 100 and the exposure by plus two. And straight away, you can see a lot more noise in my cheek area here and also in the black background. Whereas with the 55% Zebra version, it's not as bad. I shot all these samples at the base ISO of 640. So in a controlled environment, indoors or in a studio, you can take advantage of the fact that you can actually shape and control the light, overexpose to 55% zebras, and then adjust the lighting accordingly. Let's take a look next at some of the different methods for setting exposure when shooting outside. So there's a couple of different scenarios you might find yourself in when shooting outside in daylight. In the first scenario, you have an 18% middle grey card that you can make use of. And in the second scenario, you might not have an 18% middle grey card with you. Let's take a look first at the examples where we do have an 18% middle grey card. Here I'm using this middle section of the Color Checker Pro. If the scene is well lit, then you might get away with 41% zebras on a grey card. And you could also check that nothing's clipping by setting the zebras to 94 and checking that there's no zebras in the image. So let's take a look at this first example. I'll just go full screen and play this back. The clouds are very slowly moving here. So this is ungraded footage with zebras set to 41% for middle gray. The meter was reading plus two flashing. And once again, this is at ISO 640. Next up, we've got the application of the official Sony LUT. And this is what it looks like with no additional color grading. This version is once again with zebra set at 41 with the official Sony LUT applied, plus some additional color grading that I performed. And finally, I added some extra color grading just to try and reduce the brightness of the sky. I'll just pause it there for a moment. Notice that we've actually got some detail in the sky still. It's not completely blown out. So all of those examples were set with zebras at 41. Let's take a look next at zebras set to 55. Just go full screen and we'll just start playing this back. Once again, the clouds are moving very slowly. So this is ungraded footage. And this is what it looks like with the official Sony LUT applied. Just gonna pause it for a moment here. One thing to bear in mind is the official Sony LUT will expect middle gray to be at 41%. Here it's at 55%. So you might need to lower the exposure in post prior to applying the official Sony LUT. And you can see already that the sky is blown out here. Let's continue playing this. This is with the official Sony LUT applied and reducing the exposure prior to applying the LUT. This gets it more in line with what the LUT expects. I'll be doing a complete color grading tutorial for S-Log3 in a future video, so if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Let's just keep playing. And this is with some additional color grading applied after adding the LUT. This version is once again applying some additional color grading with a mask to try and bring back the sky, but notice here that we can't actually recover hardly any detail in the sky. And that's because we've overexposed the image. 
So this is an important thing to bear in mind, even though the Sony a7S 3 with S-Log3 has a good amount of dynamic range, you're always going to have compromises. In this case, you need to ask yourself what the subject of the scene is. The subject in this scene is actually the colour checker card here, and not the actual background or the sky. So you can imagine a person in place of this colour checker card. In that case, the person would probably be the subject in the frame, and you'd want to expose that person correctly. Doing so with Zebra set to 55 will mean that you'll blow out the sky here. So there's a compromise to bear in mind here when trying to remove as much noise from the subject as possible, and that's that you might blow out other areas of the image, such as the sky here. Let's take a look next at a side-by-side -side noise comparison. On the left is Zebra set to 41 with the Sony LUT color grading and the sky grade applied. And on the right here is Zebra set to 55, once again with the Sony LUT, some color grading and the sky grade. And you can see in this side-by-side -side example, the difference in the sky. In both of these cases, the exposure for the subject, the color checker card is correct. I'll just go full screen and play this back so you can see the difference. And I'll just skip ahead to this version when I've zoomed in 400% on the colour checker card. So the version on the left was correct exposure with Zebra set to 41 and on the right Zebra set to 55. The focus is a bit different on the right so I apologise for that. But you can see the noise difference. If I play this back, check out the noise in the shadows on the left versus the noise in the shadows on the right. Hopefully you can see that with YouTube compression. So even though the version on the right is a bit out of focus, there's a definite improvement in the noise with Zebra set to 55. But as we saw in this version, with Zebra set to 55, we're going to blow out the sky. The other scenario is that you're shooting outside and you don't have access to a grey card. Just going to open up this other sequence. What I've done in this example is to set Zebras to 92 in camera. The maximum is 94 for S-Log3, but I've set this to 92 to allow for a bit of safety in the exposure. Then what I did is I exposed it so that the sky just starts to have Zebras appear and then lowered the exposure a tiny bit so the Zebras just disappear. This will basically expose the image as hot as possible, which will also raise darker areas further away from the noise floor. Alternatively, in an evenly lit scene where the camera meter will give you a pretty good reading, just adjust your exposure until the meter reads between plus 1.7 and plus 2.0 non-flashing, and have your zebra set to 94 so you know if anything is going to be overexposed. So this version is with Zebra set to 92. This is set to 92 with the official Sony LUT applied without any colour grading. Just have a look at this playing back full screen. This is with the official Sony LUT plus some additional colour grading applied. And this is with the additional sky grade, so this looks a bit unrealistic, a bit HDR like. But you can see that we've got a lot of detail in the sky still. In this example I set zebras to 55% and then I adjusted the exposure so zebras mostly covered my face. This is the ungraded version. This is with the official Sony LUT only. This is with the official Sony LUT plus some additional colour grading that I added. And this is grading using the Film Convert Nitrate grading plugin. So basically if you're shooting outside and your subject is a person, set your zebras to 55% and then adjust your exposure so the zebras just start to cover most of the face. So what about if you're shooting at night? I've got this test footage here that I shot at this harbour. This first version, this is ungraded, and I've set the exposure using the meter only. And I've set the meter so it reads 0.0, .0 at ISO 12800. This is ungraded footage. You can see a little bit of noise in the sky. Let's have a look at this footage that's been graded just using the official Sony LUT. Doesn't look too bad. And we've got this version that's using the official Sony LUT plus a little bit of extra colour grading. Sorry about the wobbling of the image, it was pretty windy when I was shooting this footage. Here's a zoomed in version at 400% and you can see a little bit of noise here but we are at 400%. Next I tried to overexpose this scene so I set the zebras at 92% and adjusted the exposure until the zebras just started to appear on those bright street lights and then backed off the exposure a little bit so the zebras disappeared. To get this exposure I had to boost the ISO up to 32,000. So we've moved away from the second base ISO of 12,800 here. So we're going to get a little bit more noise just from the ISO. This is the ungraded footage. 
And this is the footage graded just using the official Sony LUT. You can see a little bit of noise in the orange glow in the sky at the right hand side here. This version is with the official Sony LUT plus a little bit of extra color grading that I applied. And if we have a look at this version, this is zoomed in 400%. You can see a bit more noticeable noise here. For this next version, I used the camera meter and I overexposed using ISO until I hit a value of plus 1.7 on the meter. To do this, I had to boost the ISO again to 64,000. So once again, we're moving further away from that second base ISO, so we're going to get more noise. If we just play this back, this is the ungraded footage. There's definitely a bit more noise now. This is the same footage with the official Sony LUT applied and you can definitely see more noise in the sky here. You can see a few more stars I think maybe. And this is the version with the Sony LUT applied plus some extra color grading that I performed. And if we zoom in to 400%, we can definitely see some noise, especially in the orange glow area on the right hand side. I've done a few side-by-sides just so you can see the comparisons. On the left here we've got ISO 12800 which is the second base ISO. This is the ISO in these examples with the lowest noise. In the middle we've got the zebra set to 92 and overexposed by plus 0.7 and on the right overexposed by plus 1.7. To my eyes the worst example here is the middle example where we've only overexposed by plus 0.7. If I just play this back so you can have a look at it in motion. Notice on the right hand version where we've overexposed by plus 1.7 even though we've had to boost the ISO again I think that this footage looks a bit better than the middle footage. Doesn't look quite as noise free as the left hand side though. I also shot some additional test footage of this ship. This is the ungraded footage. For some reason they chose a really horrible orange light to light this ship, not sure why. This is 12,800 ungraded meter reading of 0.0. Looks pretty good. Here's the same footage with the Sony LUT applied. Got that lovely orange glow. And this footage looks actually pretty nice to my eyes. This is the same footage just with a little bit of extra color grading. Once again, I think this looks pretty good from a noise point of view. This version is ungraded and I overexposed to get a meter reading of plus 0.7. To do this I had to increase the exposure or the ISO to 32,000. There's definitely more noise in this version. But if we have a look at a graded version, it doesn't look too bad. But there's definitely a bit of noise in this one. And this is the same version with a bit of extra color grading. I've also done some side-by-sides of these shots. On the left is ISO 12800 and on the right ISO 32000. And if we zoom in, we can see the right hand side definitely has more noise here. So I think this version, the left hand side actually looks a bit better. I didn't actually perform this test at a meter reading of plus 1.7, so it would have been interesting to see how that compared. Just gonna come back to the harbor version. So based on these results, if you're going to overexpose S-Log3 at night, you probably don't want to go much farther than 6400 ISO, otherwise you might get some ISO related noise. But if you are going to overexpose, you're probably going to want to make sure that you overexpose by about 1.7 and not just 0.7 as we can see in the middle here. This middle version definitely looks the worst to my eyes. So at the start of this video, I promised you a bonus tip. Before we get to that, if you like this video, please click the like button, that really helps the channel. And if you're not already subscribed, feel free to do so and turn on notifications. Also, if you've got anything you want to ask or you've got any suggestions, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. So onto the bonus tip. If you want a quick and easy reference guide to the exposure scenarios I've covered in this video, head over to my Instagram, at Jason the Roberts, and you can find these downloadable guides. You can screenshot them and save them to your phone for future reference. See ya.